What's your name? Oh. Name's Brody Williams. Well, glad you're here. You support the Yellow Vest? Pardon? You support the Yellow Vest? I see oh, you're wearing I something. I definitely support the Yellow Vest. I'm very concerned about how Canada has, as a whole is, is now becoming uh, lost in Canadian traditional values. Yeah. What's your ethnicity? I'm Haida Gwaii from Massif, BC. Oh, Haida Gwaii. Very good. Okay, very good. So what's your impression of uh, Trudeau versus Macron? Do you think they're the same, cut from the same cloth? Oh, definitely the same, same cloth. You call them globalists? Uh, all globalists that want to destroy a nation within and divide people. <laughs> yeah, divide and conquer. Correct. So who do you think is behind uh, the globalists? Who's who's the uh, force behind the it? The United Nations, the Rothschilds, Soros, yep. all of those bad people. Yeah. My research indicates people behind the Rothschilds and Soros are international Jewish power. Correct. Yeah, I mean, I think that's all roads kind of lead in that direction and what right. their motivations like Rothschild, Zionist, Talmudic. So have you, have you looked into that as well? Yeah, I've been looking into that. It's good, it's good to say the truth, you know. It's good, it good, good for people to stand up it's and say that. It's important that people start to, to realize what's going on before it's too late. I agree. Because if people just say globalists or the Illuminati, it's vague. So how do we get our hands on these people? But if you actually say it's the Talmudists, Rothschild, Zionists, particular ideology, Talmudic thinking, then we can pinpoint the enemy. Like Dr. E. Michael Jones says, it's like firing at paper tanks. If you don't say who they are, it's like you're having a war firing at paper tanks. You don't even know who your enemy is. That's right. So I'm glad you said it. Yeah. yeah. So Thank you. How long have you been wise to the, the, the this this truth? How, when did you find out? Oh, it's at least five years now oh yeah yeah, yeah it's about the same time for me yeah i think it's about 2012 i got it everybody seems to learn it gradually right yeah yeah and you know that it's becoming very evident and very progressive in their agenda to make a new world order i think it's time to wake up yeah very good thank well, you thanks for your comments okay so we're here with the uh, yellow vest I've been uh, in interviewing people, so what's your impressions of the yellow vest? I, th I think it went well. I, th I think that, and, and I think it really stands for something important, that, that Canadians are now, you know, finally taking action against uh, basically the policies of, of our current government, Justin Trudeau and uh, his cabinet members. Uh, I think that uh, they're, the, simply put, the way they're managing our country is not what the the Canadian majority want for their country. And when you have that conflict, eventually it's going to bubble up and, and sort of explode uh, uh, in France. And that's really what it's done in France yeah. uh, and, and where it began, of course. And, and uh, other nations are picking up on that. And, and uh, Canada is, you know, as well. And I think we're really just beginning, actually, with something that vitally important to, within our society. So you think Macron and Trudeau are kind of cut from the same cloth? Like absolutely, both? absolutely. They're even funded by the same cloth, or the same wallet to some degree. So and they both want to bring in immigration. Like I think Macron's saying uh, the destiny of Africa and Europe is combined and we want to bring in 200 million immigrants. Yeah, to but Europe. when he says we, what does that mean? It means that Macron and his wife do and uh, Justin and his wife do. Who, who's we? If you don't ask the people what they want, you know, you you can't know what uh, the the majority or the what what the will of the people is, what they want. If you don't, if you if you separate that will from uh, leadership in government, you have a breach of democracy, and that is, I mean, this is on a political level. I, I think this is really what it is. Uh, we do have a breach of democracy, uh, or an abuse of democracy, yeah. uh, 
uh, as we can see with with many of uh, the Trudeau government's de decisions. So who's behind like Macron and Trudeau? You say the same people are behind them. No, I don't say that so much as like I know that there's one funder, uh, you know, very like billionaire funder who who funds both Macron and Trudeau. Who's that? It's uh, it's a family. It's a Canadian family from Eastern Canada. Really? Uh, yeah, I didn't know. You wanna? You don't have to say who. <laughs> it's up to you. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I didn't know. But that's okay. Something to look into. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. But yeah, I guess they're um, they're globalists, right? Right. Yeah. Right. They want to bring immigration everywhere and just um, overrun. Well, it's it's a replication of of immigration within all Western nations. Yeah. But curiously, the same uh, demographic uh, goal, you know, is not replicated within non-democratic nations. So, in other words, or think of it this it's way: it's not equal. It's not fair. No. Well, why doesn't the Canadian media ever? ask or mention, uh, you know, speak about the fact that the nations that are not Western democracies are not responsible for the migrants. So really, it's just a transfer of peoples from third world countries to first world countries without the public have any say, choice, no mandate, no referendum, no democracy. And yeah. that's Justin Trudeau's style of leadership as it was his father Pierre's Trudeau. Good style. point, yeah. No democratic, and it's something so fundamental as the demographics of a country, and there's no right. democratic consultation with the people. Well, think, think about this idea, right? As you say, it, it's like something so fundamentally important. Uh, to our nation and our, our government never even informs the Canadians of where the immigrants come from we we don't even yeah. know like as a citizenship shouldn't we have a right to for to a government report that says okay here's the breakdown of the nations that are uh, uh, are um, we're admitting uh, uh, migrants to um, you know, so, but of course, in their elitism, they would never consider that they, you know, gee, it might be fair or right, you know, to let Canadians know. Like, maybe you'd maybe even make like Africans who don't assimilate that way. Right? Yeah. But they with might us. be more comfortable even that way. Because at least, but, but when it's, when it's, um, uh, obscured like that, you know, and so that's just one example. Yeah. Yeah, they bring them people like from Africa who don't assimilate well, don't have the, the language, the skills to work here. They can't work, so we have to subsidize them. You know, versus people who could work or fit in. Like, a, well, I mean, even you know, the government. It's you know, it's interesting. Justin Trudeau always speaks like immigration and multiculturalism and refugee <laughs> status is Canada. Yeah, and so does the immigration minister Ahmed Hussein who is himself a Somali and Islamic refugee. Yeah. And Justin puts this guy in charge of our demographic destiny yeah. of our nation. That's like asking a, a fox to guard the hen house. <laughs> right. You know, so I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's so many signs of, of uh, a breach of democracy and an abuse of democracy with having members of parliament who are dual citizens with um, one is a Pakistani dual, uh, another is Saudi, or one of those. Um, you know, and uh, and uh, these are people that Justin Trudeau has empowered to make important decisions on behalf of 37 million Canadians. And and one of them doesn't. We it is simply unknown where she comes from. Maria Monsef, minister, really, minister of ironically minister of uh, women's. Um, I'm getting the name wrong. Oh, I, but I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, it's true. And she believes in Sharia law. <laughs> oh gosh. And we, I've I've seen a tweet where she says so. Not making this up. For, you know. Uh, uh, um, so Justin puts a Sharia supporting first time MP, 34 years old, unknown origin. We don't know whether she was born in Afghanistan or Iran. Wow. Or we don't know where the heck she was born, period, right? And he put this woman, Maria Monsef, 32 at the time, 
in charge of electoral reform. That was her portfolio. Okay, do you know how, how long? I appreciate you telling the audience this. I didn't know this. I yeah. appreciate they, 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 How long had she lived in the Canada for when he did this appointment? Six years. Oh, wow. She comes from a non-democratic nation. She had no raising within Canada, no understanding of our history, you know. You know, no, nothing to qualify her for this position. He puts her in charge of electoral reform. She screws that up. What does he do? He shifts her over to Minister of Status of Women. Oh. This Minister of Status of Women has never in mentioned one thing, made one statement against female genital mutilation or child marriage or Sharia law. Wow. Never. Good point. Wow. And she's the Minister of uh, Rights for Women. You see, so here we see a prime example of the stupidity and idiocy of Justin Trudeau, who in reality is a destroyer. This guy's a destroyer, okay? He, he might smile and smirk and do his stupid, you know, but, but uh, with nice suits and all of this business. People fall for him, though. People yeah, fall, they fall for, him. for him. They fall for his charisma, but there's more to a political leader than charisma. And long hair, yeah. You know, it, 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 if, that's, if that's all you're bringing to the table as a prime minister, huh, that you don't understand the economic portfolio, that you don't understand law. And undermining right? his own people. Yeah, and, 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 and you don't have a firm understanding of Canadian law or jurisprudence or the court system or, you know, and you, your asset is that you're uh, charismatic, then you shouldn't be prime minister. So yeah. true, Justin Trudeau, get out of office. Well, thank you. Very good speech. Teddy gets in to the North Pole. He's ruining our country. Yes, he is. And there is, you know, so much North Pole up there with so few voting block. So us voting block of the jolly old elves up in the North Pole, we know we're voting conservative, but it's just so few and such a wide expanse. And we need the rest of the Canadian people to also think about the Santa in the North Pole when they're voting in 2019. Thank you, Santa. I hope you make it come true for me. Oh, yes, Happy Santa Monday. will. Hey, little girl, have a candy cane. Jail time. And, and, and Trudeau has signed this. Trudeau has signed this. And they said, no, 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 it's not binding. The minute everybody signed it, they said it's binding. So we become slaves to the UN. And basically that's yeah, it. Basically, we are this is the most important thing. So we cannot criticize Muslim, we cannot criticize any Christian. Yes, she does. Are you afraid? It's dangerous for them too because they won't be able to speak about their religion. This is the is the hatred creation motion. Yeah, that we know why. Has it fully passed yet? It's fully passed now? No, 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 the, the party of the conservative value party, or the PBC, or you know, conservative party took power, the yeah. yeah. you know, We need the right of free speech in this country. So why are you on these issues? Every, every country is a leader yeah. by yeah. We know in China, you don't have the right to, yeah. to, exactly. to, to free so speech. You know. The people there live like in here. Yeah, and you know, we don't want that they, here. We don't want. People we don't have want. moved here yeah. because we yeah. don't want We that. don't want. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we like the country of, you know, free it's space. Beautiful. This is a right. Unity is right. our strength. Yeah. Diversity yeah. is yeah. the divide. Yeah. Unity, yeah. togetherness. Yeah. Yeah. Unity. You can be the same yeah. under yeah. the Canadian flag. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah.
whatever ethnic, because we share the Canadian value, we call us proud Canadian, that's unity. I don't want to divide myself in the corner, I'm Chinese, and I'm, I'm in East Indian. You're not going to take away from us, and you're going to be with us. This, well, right? this device, oh, beautiful. and then everybody just keep their culture, whatever they want. Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Woke up to find out that the, the stock market had crashed, their, their money was worthless, you know, and that's what it takes. And most people, as long as they're happy, it's Christmas time, yay, spend money, rack up the credit card. I'm not, people aren't paying attention to anything, you know, and all this stuff is being passed and nobody has any clue whatsoever how much of our sovereignty we're giving away, how much our, the banks are controlling this country. I mean, it's on and on. It's not just one issue, it's multiple issues. But you know what you said, it's very important. They are not trying to fix the third world. They are trying to turn the West into the West world. And this is the, the most important thing that is actually said, because once we become all like a third world, there is nothing to aspire to. There is uh, no way to pull you out of the hole that you're in, right? So once they turn Canada, the United States, Western Europe to a third world, then we are all poor. Then we need a world government to control all this mass. That and that's, and that's what they've been planning for years, since the League yeah. of Nations at the end of the Second World War. I mean, they've been very trying this clear for people who still have a few functioning brain cells, but people who don't want to see the truth, They'll just be in denial until the disaster Well, happens. I think the big problem, too, is a lot of people get their information, like some of my co-workers. Well, I saw it on the 6 o'clock news last night. Yeah, okay, well, that explains why, you you know, you have zero information. What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, people have people have no clue. You know, they, they think they because they watch the 6 o'clock news, the cat was rescued from a tree. You know, that's all they know. The hockey game's on. You know, their distraction, the football game is on, Christmas is here, and people aren't paying attention to the important things. And what people all the time, it's like, do it for the children. Yeah, that's right, do it for the children. Wake the hell up. You know, start, stop electing governments that are constantly creating more debt and more interest payments and more, you know, more slavery for future generations. You know, yeah, do it for the children. It's Wake a, up. It's a Ponzi scheme that is unsustainable in the no, long run, right? As I tell people, it's like a credit card on a personal level. In your personal finances, you know, people are there like, oh, we'll spend, yeah, prosperity. Yeah, because you put it on debt. Now you've got to pay that debt back at some point or you lose everything. The banksters come in and it's all, you know, yeah, the car, the house, you bought all that, it's all on credit. You stop paying for that stuff, the banksters come and take it. Well, look what happened to Greece. It was the same thing. Everybody voted themselves free stuff and more free stuff. And next thing you know, income tax is 50%. Sales taxes are 20-something percent. People were going out of the way. I have some friends in Greece. They were going out of the way to go to other countries in the EU to buy their stuff because taxes. So everybody wanted this free stuff, not realizing that it cost all these taxes to pay for all the free stuff and now they're trying to avoid the taxes because you know they, they want the free stuff but they don't want to pay for any of the taxes so of course Greece went bankrupt because they just kept borrowing more money and borrowing more money and borrowing more money until finally the banks were said hey listen you know you're in default position right now here you haven't tightened your belt you are still got these wasteful spending in this country no different you know more welfare here every time that Mr. Dress Up turns around you know he tweets tweets away 50 million dollars like it's his own money like what the hell what the the hell? Oh, you, you've seen that one, right? Where yeah, some third-rate, some third-rate comedian, what, Trevor Noah or some, exactly. you, know, you know, it's like, oh, well, congratulations, Trevor, you're going to Mel uh, Nelson Mandela, the commies, you know, the anniversary uh, celebration. We'll just, we can't go, I can't go, but here's $50 million towards this. It's like, buddy, that's not your fucking money. And the thing is that nobody asked him to do that. No. He just kind of yeah. went out of his way to impress some TV personality yeah. or something. Well, it's interesting because even the lefties, because I saw like a poll, you know, even in lefty magazines that were kind of saying like wait a minute he can't just do that that's taxpayer money so even the even the people on the far left even the complete idiots who voted for this this idiot buffoon that we have as the prime minister even they're starting to wake up and realize hey wait a minute the compact on migration lefty magazines polls 85 percent against it in lefty magazines you know that's not even right wing that's in lefty publications 85 percent of the people were against this he signs it anyway so don't call don't tell me this country is a democracy it's not even when the people have said no we don't want this oh well hey you know what we know better than you we're the elites we run the country we're going to do whatever the hell we want and what the people say we let them eat cake let them eat cake we don't care so Okay. Yeah.
It basically means that we shouldn't be sending the children of our nations to fight in the interests of the elites that run the countries because we would never know for sure what their intentions are and it's always going to be, if you follow the money, that's where their intentions are going to lie and they're not always going to be the best intentions of the people. And it's not fair that thousands and thousands of people die, you know, daily. People are dying daily in the Middle East on the interest of Trudeau's money and Saudi Arabia's oil and it's just not fair for the people themselves. And we know she have Israel there. Yeah. But um, what are your views on Israel here? Um, well, I think that it's a little hypocritical that they have a border wall and they constantly, even though I acknowledge the threat of Palestine is scary to Israelites, um, they kill and they shoot people at their border. They tear gas them constantly. But the same, but then Israeli Americans, Israeli, dual citizenship in politics, they will say, no, we can't have a border wall when there are people literally climbing aboard it invading America. And you can claim that they're refugees or they're migrants, but they're, if you look at the facts, they're invading a country. And historically, for, since people have had civilizations, that would be seen as an invasion. But because of like, soft globalism and everyone's demand, demanding to, um, to be multicultural and to just accept everybody no matter what, it's... Are you getting a little carried away? Yeah, but it's interesting that Israel itself does not believe in multiculturalism. No, they do not. They actually pay African Jews to go back to Africa. They don't want anybody who is not an ethnic Jew to be in Israel. And, you know, they're actually not even Semitic people, which is really, at the most of, I believe, at the most of the Ashkenazi people aren't even Semites. So they don't actually have a claim to Israel, to the Holy Land. They're trying to claim it for themselves. And if you look at the Talmud, the, what, the Isra what Israel's and Zionists follow, it will say that they don't see non-Jews non as people and that they need to take back the Holy Land and reclaim it for themselves because they're chosen by God. No, God, God doesn't choose an entire race of people because he thinks it's special. God loves all his children equally. And that's just very, it's very hypocritical. Yeah. And I think that, and they're just kind of pulling strings and they're sending our nation's children to die. And yeah. And, and uh, Gideon Levy says the same thing. He's an Israeli. And he said the reason they get away with killing Palestinians is they do not consider them human. Exactly. That's exactly it. Natalie so it's not a human rights issue. It's not a human rights issue. No, That's what it's saying. not. Yeah. And honestly, America, the United States of America, should not have dual citizen Israeli Americans fighting in the, in, uh, like, Zionists, in their government, fighting for the, on the needs. Uh, the interests of Israel with American resources and time and, and effort it's just not fair to the American people no matter who, what you think an American is because I can get your sign on camera too. Do you want to use your name or is that a secret? Hey, look at the Masonic sign over there. Look at that. Is she with you? Yeah. Very good. Okay, what does your sign say? Well, maybe meds will help. <laughs> yeah. Big pharma stock values, yeah. So, we know all their dirty secrets. People have suspected for a long time that we're all being played. The system is rigged, but now it's like, what's the point of suspecting it? What about saying, you know, if then, why, why do we say, you know, if such and such, such and such, such and such, then it must all be rigged. It's like, no, not if, it is rigged. It's just a fact. We know this now. They can't keep playing us. We know that the Constitution, or the, char or the Charter, Canadian Charter was written by a man. We know the Constitution of the United States was written by a bunch of men that got together in a room, wrote it. But they've broken the social contract and they've been breaking it secretly for so long that they need to be brought to justice for fraud and a new social contract needs to be brokered. brokered. They were able to keep the secret, the secrets from us for a while, but at this point we just know, we know too much. So the whole the house of cards is collapsing. 
uh, so much for the single Y chromosome Saudi royal family. So much for Trudeau and his $23 million of energy, pharma, and real estate. So much for the mental health system drugging dissidents before they have a chance to speak up, speak the truth, before they have a chance to even realize that they're dissidents or even what they stand for. It's time to write our own constitution. They did it. What's stopping us? So, and I don't think, I think Alberta needs to have its own, its own borders. The movement can't be co-opted because, and if they're going to try already the leading voices of the Yellow Vest movement, the, lead, the leaders on the Facebook group, they're out at its Masons. Are they the really people, the yes. Masons? Because I, yeah. I joined the Yellow Vest Facebook group and they kicked me off. Yeah, they're, they're. But Chase, Chase let me come. I know Freemasons, so. Freemasons, <laughs> Judaism for the Gentiles. That's how Freemasons has been described. It's. It's it, it's a means of having a front that it's okay because most of the third, fourth, fifth degree Masons are really good guys that really yeah, want they to make the world a better place. And, and but the problem is, is that when as one of their projects to get to the fourth degree or whatever, they're like co-opt a movement. That is a it's it's an assignment that they're commonly given. Yeah to co-opt a movement or to create a movement. Um, but do you think that the, as, as ultimately, the, do you think it's the elite Jews at the top that control the Masons? The Masons are lower down in the power well, chain than the elite Jews? Jews. Well, Let's face it, Jared Kushner is a white guy. He's not Semitic in any way, shape, or form. He's not, you know, and even the idea, the people who are really Jewish that you see, they look Jewish, they got, they got the curly hair coming off the side. And they really practice and read and follow the Torah. They follow the prophets. What about they the Talmud? Talmud? They actually say that it says the, the prophecy is that once Jewish people return to God with their whole heart, that God will give them the land back, and that they haven't done that, so they have no business being there. That is that's what the, the line of religious Jews are. Now, most Zionists from the UK. If you look at them, they're white people. Maybe they have a little bit of Middle Eastern blood, but they're not. They're white people They that are self-styled because it makes them feel special that they can wear this, practice that, wear the special people thing. They're, they're well, basically some, some men. Jews are white. They have grandiose delusions, and so they think, well, I've always felt kind of grandiose, so maybe I'm secretly am Jewish, and then they convert because they feel like they actually were. What about like the the, the Rothschilds or the wealthiest family in the world? They're Jewish. But Don't they think all roads lead to the Rothschilds, like the Masons as a, well? It's a misreading and an underreading of what it actually what the messages of the prophets and the judges and everything is about how Jewish people are disobedient even though God gave them the laws, showed them how to live a good way, and yet they kept disobeying and kept being punished. That's what it says, actually. So you can't say that Jewish people who actually follow the Jewish faith the, the way it's written, the way the ancient books are written, not the Talmud, not more recent stuff, the way the ancient books are written, the scriptures, if they actually follow it, you can't say anything bad about them. That's they're, they're, they're basically saying people are sinful, people fuck up over and over and over again, and we live with the consequences, but we don't learn our lesson, and we do it again. We'll come back for a time and start trying to be good people again, but we but, don't. But there, there's a differentiate between the, the elite the Jews and the Jewish people, right? There's a difference between the well, elite people like the Rothschilds and the 16 million Jewish Cause, people. Because somebody who's a practicing Jew who follows it would not be elitist. Yeah, we're talking about the elite, though. The elite, yeah, the that's elite, the problem. The, the, ones, the ones that are Talmudic. We're not talking about the ones walking down the street here. Yeah. What about the Rothschild Zionist Talmudists? Aren't they the ones who control the nation? though? Just, they're not just Jewish. Some of them are Rockefellers. I mean, there is a higher representation. I think they're agents for working. The show's working for the Jewish it, money, you though. Have to, you have to feel like you're special, more special yeah. than other people somehow. But that's how they work. They work in, through in shills. To, they work through agents, right? Yeah. But aren't the Masons, like, in a sense, shills for the, the elite Jews, like the Rothschild Zionists? I mean, aren't the Masons lower down the power chain from the Rothschild? Yeah, well, they get less of the money. Not all of them. Yeah. Because there's nothing... Because they have to keep the charade alive, then if someone manages to get really rich, like uh, 
Bill Gates is not the example of like a You know, it's yeah. Bezos now that he's negotiating. So this uh, Paul Allen, a, he, he's, I mean, even Gates, he's a white guy. Like, the, people can get ahead, but the thing is, is that it's all about their net worth is growing faster than inflation can eat it up, and minimum wage is growing slower at a slower pace than in, than inflation. So that there's always a cutoff, and people are getting cut sure. off the bottom. Yeah. And then you raise that bar, raise that bar, get the global population down to a billion people. This is why carbon is such a big focus. It's because it's a distraction. Sure, carbon is a problem. It used yeah. to be 250 parts per million, now it's 450. There is a carbon cycle. There's carbon in the atmosphere that gets taken up by plants, that get eaten by anim animals, that get made into meat. So there's a carbon cycle, but why do they talk about carbon tax? It just leads to inflation, because they like inflation. They want more inflation, as long as it's slower than their net worth. Do you think it's a big lie, the whole global warming carbon tax? I think it's another think scam? I, it's not a lie. The em environment is an emergency, but it's not just carbon. There's the plastic problem, there's the nitrogen cycle, the potassium cycle, the water cycle. All all of the natural cycles are out of whack. All of them, not just carbon. But the reason why they're saying carbon tax, carbon tax, carbon tax, that way you can do a, a tax on everyone, which just causes inflation. It doesn't lead to a reduction in carbon. So they're not trying to help us. It'll just lead to inflation. Yeah. And they're, the reason why they're not addressing nitrogen, potassium, all the rest of the table of elements, heavy metal contamination in, in seawater, shellfish, the whole food chain, bioaccumulation, they're not addressing all of the rest of the table of elements. It's because they're like, well, it won't matter because in 50 years, our population call will be complete and and we won't need to reduce our environmental impact. But it's like, no, we don't need to reduce it. We need to reverse what's been done. We need to fix the mess that we've made. Yeah, so now we're wrapping up our day with the uh, yellow vest here in downtown Vancouver. We had a real mix of people. Uh, most people were in favor of the yellow vest. Uh, people had different motivations, I guess, in, in being here. What was your impression? Yeah. Uh, I was so impressed. I mean, there were people talking about the immigration uh, issue and the UN uh, proclamation that came out about immigration to open it up and more of that. But uh, what really surprised me is meeting um, several young people that have really woken up as to who is really behind everything. So uh, that's actually <laughs> that's, uh, uh, a great thing to uh, know. That, uh, people are waking up. Yeah, the young couple we met, they've been Jew wives for about four years or two years, just gradually learning it, so they're really woken up and, and willing to show their face and talk about it, so meeting new people, so it's good to find out people really know the truth, like Santa Claus here. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas, folks. Ho, 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 Trudeau's got to go. Yeah, so it's good to meet Ho, 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 yes, we're getting the thumbs up from the crowd. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, one and all! Okay, so Brian, it'd be nice to do more of this because uh, I understand that the Yellow Vest group, uh, they meet every week. Yeah, they meet every, every week. So. Yeah, so we want to do more of these, meet, meet more people in person and see who really knows the truth and forces behind this. So stay tuned for Brian Roosh. Like and subscribe, donate to the Brian Roosh Show, and keep watching these videos and spread the word. Ho, ho, ho! Trudeau's gotta go!